practice a special pose to help us learn how to internally rotate at the very tops of the thighs. And this is important in setting up the pelvis as a pelvis that will allow a spine to be erect. So wrap the strap around the sacrum as you see here and then pull the straps from between the legs and then grab onto the straps with your palms facing forward, long spine, active legs, and pull the straps right to the right, left to the left, so at the very roots of your thighs, the thighs are internally rotating. Lift the low belly, lift the rib cage, engage the legs, and keep pulling with the hands to internally rotate at the roots of the legs. Let the pubic bone release down and lengthen the anterior spine. We'll practice a version of Tadasana with a strap. So take the strap in your hands behind your back with palms facing forward. Bend your knees, parallel legs and feet, and roll your shoulders back and down. And then straighten the legs and straighten the arms as you slide the shoulder blades down your back and lengthen the spine from bottom to top. Get long in your trunk here, long in your side ribs, and feel the whole rib cage lifting up as you slide the shoulder blades down your back so you can feel how those shoulder blades are in a separate layer from your rib cage and let the heads of the humerus bones go back and down Pull the arms down and roll your palms open, keeping tension in the strap. And then exhale and release. Now we'll practice Uttanasana. And we'll use a strap here. So hold on to the strap behind your back with palms facing forward. And begin by bringing the heads of the humerus bones or the very tops of your shoulders back. Stand tall on two legs and then bend your knees as you start to hinge at the hips to fold forward, taking the arms up and overhead. Stretch the arms towards the wrists. Pull your shoulder blades towards each other slightly and take the strap up and overhead. Let your head relax and release down. And with soft knees, think of the front of the rib cage releasing down towards the toenails so the abdomen stays long. Breathe here as you release the rib cage down, as you release the spine and the head down. Stay active in the arms, reaching the extension of the arms towards the hands. Lift the backs of the legs. Exhale right on through the top of the head. Open and released in the back of the throat. And then lead with the arms reaching back to help you come on up. Spread wide through the collarbones. And release. Now we'll do what I call a chest stretch with a strap, which is also a great shoulder opener. So hold on to the strap behind your back with your palms facing forward and take your hands quite wide. Have your feet and legs organized nicely underneath you. And stretch through the arms and reach the strap way back behind you. Get taller through the sides of your waist Lift up through the side ribs and let your shoulders reach back as the arms reach back as you keep tension on the strap. Press the feet down and draw up through the legs all the way up to the lungs. Lift from under the collarbones so the anterior spine is very long and keep reaching the arms back and start to reach the arms more and more up. So eventually the strap will come right up overhead. 
And once the strap comes up overhead, then start to extend and reach the strap back again, reaching the arms long behind you. Be very active and extended in your limbs here. See if you can create an internal lift in the spine from bottom to top. Keep reaching the arms back and then all the way down. And you can bring your hands a little closer together on the strap for the next time around if you want to make it a deeper stretch and start to reach the arms back behind you, keeping tension on the strap, staying tall through the body. Shoulders back and down as the arms go up. Shoulder blades slide down as the arms reach back and up. Stay relaxed in the neck and the jaw and the face here. Lift and relax and open the back of the throat. Take the strap all the way overhead and then start to reach the strap, the arms, back and down slowly. Even as the arms come down, stay tall in the side ribs. And then release. We'll practice a version of Urdhva Hastasana with a strap. So hold on to your strap in your hands quite wide. And then lift the arms up overhead and put a little tension on the strap. Make sure that your feet and legs are organized underneath you. A little bit of space between the feet. Get long in the legs, grounded in the feet. Lift the low belly and stretch the whole rib cage up off of the abdomen so the front side and back ribs are all lifting. And then continue the expression of that rib cage lift by stretching and lifting the arms, lifting the strap overhead. Let the arms move back as the shoulder blades move forward into the rib cage. Head balancing right on top, lengthening the body here. And then exhale and lower the arms down. Now we'll practice Tadasana. Bring your legs underneath you, your feet underneath your sitting bones. Feet can be together or a little apart. And then bend your knees and sink down into your feet. Relax your body. And then as you straighten the legs, lift the shoulders way up towards the ears. Get tall in the sides of your body and then take the shoulders back towards the back of the shoulder sockets. So the heads of the humerus bones are hugging the back of the shoulder sockets. You can bend your elbows for a moment and then straighten the arms and straighten the legs and pull the shoulders, the shoulder blades and the arms down as you get taller through the trunk, taller through the rib cage. So as the heads of the humerus, arms and shoulder blades pull down, the side ribs go up and there's an ascension through the inner body, an ascension of the spine from bottom to top. Thighs are internally rotating, outer thighs squeezing in, be long in your belly, lift the belly and breathe. And now we'll practice downward facing dog with a chair. So have your sticky mat against the wall and place the back of the chair at the wall. And rest your hands down on the seat of the chair and step your feet back into a down dog position. So we don't want the back to be rounded at all or the pelvis to be tucked. Rather, bend your knees and lift your buttocks way up high so that your pelvis will tilt on the femurs. So the buttocks is lifting and let the front of your spine be very long. Stretch through the arms, stretch the elbows, the armpits, pull the outer hips back, pull the inner thighs back, pull the pubic bone back and up behind you, and let the head release down and let the chest release towards the toes. Think of the upper spine, the thoracic spine, deepening into the body towards the chest. 
and then lengthen the trunk. Lengthen the outsides of the trunk and lengthen the inner trunk. Lift the buttocks up. You can keep your knees bent here. That might help you lift the buttocks and pull it way back. And then lean into the chair as you step your feet forward. And come to the wall now for a prasarita dog with wall support. So set up your sticky mat so the long part of the mat is against the wall. And step your feet wide, heels wider than toes. Hands on hips to start and then stretch your arms wide. And stand a few inches away from the wall so there's room for your buttocks back there. Hands on hips and then bend your knees and start to hinge forward at the hips and take your hands to the blocks. Now bend your knees a lot and lift your buttocks way up high and slide your buttocks up the wall. So make sure your feet are not too close to the wall. If you need to, you can walk your feet forward slightly. And then with hands on blocks, start to slide the blocks forwards so your trunk comes into a down dog position. Let your chest release down towards the wall that you're looking at. And let the arms stretch and let the blocks slide forward and let the buttocks lift up the wall and let the thoracic spine deepen into the body towards the chest. Let the front of your trunk be very long here. Breathe smoothly here. Breathe into the sensations and the stretches. And then slide the blocks back as you stretch the rib cage forward. Walk your feet in slightly. Bend your knees, hands to hips, shoulders back, chest open as you come all the way up to stand. And step your feet together. And now stand near the wall for a side stretch. So you'll be about a foot and a half away from the wall. Start in Tadasana. And you can have your feet a little bit apart or if you choose, you can have your feet together. Lift your arms overhead, starting in Urdhva Hastasana. Roll the thighs in, ground your thighs back, press the arms back, and snuggle the shoulder blades into the rib cage so that you're lengthening the anterior spine. And then start to press your hips out to the right as you bend your body towards the wall. And take your left hand onto the wall. Press your hips away from the wall. Grounding down through your feet. Draw up through the musculature of the legs. Side bending towards the wall. And as you inhale, create more length. And even walk the fingertips up the wall. Be strong and long in your legs as you side bend here. And think of the thoracic spine deepening towards the chest. So make sure this side bend is not at all a forward bend or a rounding in the back. If anything, it's more like a back bend joining with the side bend. Press the shoulder blades forward and open the right ribs towards the ceiling and maybe even turn to look up. And then press your hands off the wall to come back to center, both arms lifting arms and legs extending, and exhale and lower your arms down. And then turn around for the other side, this time the outer right hip near the wall, and lift your arms up overhead, firm legs, internal rotation in the thighs. Lift the rib cage, create a deep, internal ascension up through the central axis of the body which runs along the front of the spine and then start to side bend to the right as you press your hips to the left. And you'll feel those right fingertips come to the wall and then the left fingertips come to the wall and walk your fingertips up the wall as you deepen the side bend and create more length. And press your shoulder blades into the rib cage. Open the left ribs towards the ceiling. Press the hips to the left and even look up towards the ceiling and find a sense of a back bend inside the side bend. Buttocks releasing down. 
pubic bone and tailbone reaching for each other. And then push off the wall to come to center, extending arms and legs. And exhale, lowering the arms down. And now bring your sticky mat to the wall for a variation of Parshvottanasana. And step your left foot forward and right foot back. Hips are square. Feet are hips distance apart. And then lift your arms and lengthen your waist up through the arms, through the fingertips. So there's a big lift of the low belly and a lift of the rib cage up. Continue to square your hips. The back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Lift up through the musculature of the legs and then hinge forward at the hips to bring your fingertips to the wall. And walk your fingertips up the wall to get longer. Pull your hips back. Engage the musculature of the legs so that the muscles of the legs lift up from ankles to knees to hips. Think of the outer left hip pulling back and think of squeezing the outer hips towards each other. And let your head release down. And then push your fingertips off the wall to come all the way up to center. Exhale your arms out to the sides and down. Hands to hips. And then come to the other side, taking the right foot forward and left foot back. Back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Hips are square. Musculature of the legs are engaged. And lift the arms all the way up, lengthening the waist up. Lift the rib cage three-dimensionally up off of the abdomen, off of the lower back. Extended arms, open hands. Draw the muscles of the legs up from ankles to knees to hips. And then hinge at the hips to take the fingertips to the wall and walk those fingertips up the wall as you pull your pelvis back. Extended arms and legs here, long in the trunk, long spine. Let your head release down and think of pinning your outer hips, gathering them in towards the midline. Pull that outer right hip back even more. Stay very active in your legs here. And then push off the wall to come back to center, lengthening the arms. And exhale, release the arms out to the sides and down. Hands to hips and step your feet together. And now we'll practice Parshva Konasana using the wall. So set up your sticky mat against the wall and have a block nearby. And then step your feet wide with your outer left foot at the wall. Heels wider than toes, hands on hips, shoulders back, lifted and long in the spine, shoulder blades hugging into the rib cage. And then turn the whole right leg out. So the foot turns out and the whole thigh rotates so that the front of your right leg points towards the right. And then bend your right knee so the knee is tracking directly over the midline of the foot. Grab your block and rest your hand on the block on the inside of your right foot. Press your right upper arm into the right inner knee. And then lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. And think of the shoulder blades hugging deeper into the rib cage. Let the thoracic spine move deep into the body towards the chest. And then swing your left arm all the way across and gaze at your top hand. Press the outer left foot into the wall. Become very extended in that back leg. Left thigh bone pulls back. And then lengthen that left leg all the way through the left side of the trunk, all the way through the left arm. And firm the right butt cheek forward. So the buttocks is not at all back behind you, but firm the right buttock forward towards the groin. And then inhale, come all the way up to center, hands on hips. Move the block over to the side. Turn your feet so that they're parallel. And step your feet together. And 
and get ready for the other side now, stepping your feet wide so the outer right foot comes to the wall. Engage your legs, lengthen your legs, hands on hips. Let the shoulders hug the back of the shoulder sockets. Let the thoracic spine move deeper into the body towards the chest, elbows back, long waist, abdomen lengthening. And then turn the whole left leg out so that left thigh is even turning out. So the thigh bone is turning in the socket. And then bend the left knee so the knee is tracking directly over the midline of the foot. Pull the left butt cheek forward towards the left groin so the buttock is not at all sinking back behind you. And then ground the right thigh back. Let the outer right foot press into the wall. And it's okay if that right hip comes forward. The right hip does not have to be perfectly flat. In, in fact, it shouldn't be. So that right hip can come forward a little, a little bit of internal rotation in that right thigh, which will help the left butt cheek drop down and come under you. And then lift the right arm up, stretch the right arm to the ceiling, spread the wingspan, and then deepen the thoracic spine towards the chest as you swing your right arm across and gaze at the top hand. Be very long in the whole right side of your body, so stretch from the right heel to the right fingertips, getting longer there, deepening the bend in the left knee. Left knee is staying open as the left upper arm presses back against it. Left buttock dropping down and coming under you. Right thigh grounding back. And then inhale and come all the way up. Hands to hips. Feet parallel. And step your feet together. And then release your arms and recover with an open chest. Now we'll practice legs up the wall pose. So place your sticky mat against the wall and then sit down so that one side of your body is very close to the wall and then swing your back onto the floor and your legs up the wall. And scoochie yourself in very close to the wall so that you feel the backs of your legs and your buttocks resting on the wall. Stretch the legs up, stretch the inner feet up and extend your arms onto the sticky mat up overhead. Long arms and long legs, long trunk. Soft, long belly settling down towards the anterior spine. Toes are open. And stay active here, lengthening the limbs. Keeping the chest open. Grounding the inner thighs and the tops of your thighs towards the wall. And then adjust your arm position Take your arms by your sides and let your shoulder blades slide down your back and come into a more restful pose now. Stay present and deep in your breath. And now bend your knees and roll on to one side. And lay down on your back now for a supine twist. Extend your arms out to the sides. Lift your knees up over your hips. And then take your knees over to the right towards your right elbow. And rest your legs down on the floor here. And then reach the left arm to the left to increase the twist. Feel your belly rolling to the left as your legs relax more and more to the right. Have a sense of widening across the collarbones, long and wide through the arms, open hands. You can ground your arms down into the floor 
Lengthen the spine here and turn the belly more to the left as you relax the legs more to the right. And then bring your legs up to the center. And take your legs over towards the left elbow, knees nice and bent. Take a moment as you settle your body here. Reach the right arm to the right to help open the chest and let your belly recede and roll to the right as you relax your legs more and more to the left. Spread through the arms, long spine, smooth breath. Roll the belly to the right. And then take the legs back to center and feet down. And now we'll do Setu Bandhasana, moving in a flow. So ground the arms as you inhale and come all the way up to Setu Bandha, lifting the buttocks, and then exhale and roll yourself back down, letting the buttocks come down last. Keeping the arms extended by your sides, palms flat. You'll keep the arms here as you inhale and lift the buttocks up and continue to lift the spine up, lift the chest and exhale, release the spine down, letting the thoracic spine roll down, then the lumbar, and then the buttocks. Inhale to lift the buttocks first, lifting the lumbar, lifting the thoracic, one vertebrae at a time, and exhale, roll the thoracic and lumbar and pelvis and tailbone back down. And continue with this flow, staying grounded in the inner feet, Staying gathered in the outer thighs and outer knees. Staying grounded in the hands and in the forearms. Let your breath be open. Let the back of the throat be open as you undulate here and say to Bandhasana. Going at your own pace. And then the next time you roll down, stay here and take a couple of breaths, resting. Now we'll practice a simple groin stretch. Start on your back with a neutral pelvis, neutral spine, knees bent and feet flat. Legs are parallel and stretch your arms overhead, lengthen out through the arms. And then stretch the legs as well and roll the thighs internally so the fronts of your legs point straight up to the ceiling and be very long in your limbs and in your trunk here, creating length. And then keep that length in the trunk, in the left leg, and bring the right knee towards the chest, towards the right side of the chest, even towards the right armpit and grab onto the right knee with both hands and clasped fingers. And stay long in the abdomen, long in the spine. Extend long through that left leg, roll the left thigh in and ground the left thigh bone down towards the floor. And then grab the right knee with your right hand only as you see here, and start to pull your right knee out to the right. Stretch your left arm to the left at shoulder height and open up that right knee out to the side. Stay long in the left leg and play with moving around that right knee up towards the armpit, down towards hip level. And see if you can explore a groin inner thigh stretch here as the right knee opens out to the right. And then bring the knee back to center and pause here. And then stretch your right leg out, lengthening it out as you bring your left knee towards the left side of your chest. And grab onto the top of the left shin with clasped fingers and pull the left knee towards the left armpit as you stretch the right leg more. Internally rotate, especially at the very top of the right thigh and ground the right thigh down. 
Stay awake in your feet, toes spreading. Long spine. Don't let your abdomen become hardened. A receding, long abdomen. Open chest, shoulder blades sliding down your back. And then stretch the right arm to the right as you take the left knee in the left hand only and start to pull the knee over to the left so the knee stays bent. And you open that left knee out to the left, staying active in your right leg. And play with some movement here, taking your left knee up towards the armpit or down towards hip level. Explore the range of motion here as you enjoy the groin opening. Reach the inner right foot forward and take your knee out to the side even more, deepening the stretch. And then take your knee back to the center. And then place your left foot down. Bend your right knee and place your right foot down. Now we'll practice a supported fish with a bolster underneath the rib cage and have a strap nearby for your hands. So lay back so the bolster supports you underneath your thoracic spine. Release the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back, away from the back ribs. Knees bent and feet flat to support you and then grab your strap and reach your arms up and overhead, hands holding the strap at shoulder distance apart. Enjoy this nice extension of the spine as you lengthen through the front of the spine and lengthen the abdomen and then extend your legs. Stretch the legs and stretch the arms. Allow yourself to be supported by the bolster here. Become internally absorbed here. As you relax and release and gently guide yourself to lengthen a little more. Smooth and steady inhalation and a steady exhalation. And then bend your knees one at a time, place your feet flat, and roll to your side. Pass through your side to come out of the pose, coming on up to sit. Now we'll do another version of supported fish, this time with a bolster and two blankets. So please set up as you see here. The bolster is horizontal, and then you have two folded blankets and that will be for your head support. So lay back over the bolster so the bolster is supporting your rib cage. It's not under the lumbar spine. Rather, it's under the thoracic spine. And then pull the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. And the shoulders will relax into the gap between the bolster and the folded blankets. And the head will rest on the folded blankets. And start to extend and relax the legs. Let the arms relax right out to the sides. Let the abdomen settle. Let the shoulders relax here. C 
see if the shoulders can really let go because of all of this support that's here. Let the head and neck relax because they're supported by the blankets. Let the upper torso relax as it's supported by the bolster. Let gravity have an effect on the shoulders, releasing and relaxing. Slow down your exhalations here. Stay very present in this moment inside yourself. Observing whatever arises. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. And then start to come out of the pose by curling onto your right side. Now get ready for Supta Baddha Konasana. So have your bolster on the sticky mat lengthwise and have an open blanket near your feet as you see here. And tuck your buttocks under so the flesh of your buttocks is pulled away from your lower back and then lengthen yourself back out onto the bolster and let your feet come together and the knees open and wrap the blanket over the feet find a way to bunch up the blanket so that you're supported and then grab onto opposite elbows and have your arms all the way overhead relax and release the internal trunk here so that your breath can move freely through the trunk let the breath move up and down the spine and as you relax in your trunk see if more length comes naturally Relax and release the abdomen, unsticking, ungripping any contraction. And then switch the cross of the arms and pull for a moment the elbows long behind you so that your arms are elongating out of the waist. And let your arms rest as you settle, as you elongate the exhalations here. Release and relax the hips and the groins. Enjoy the support of the bolster for your upper back. And enjoy the passive extension. Allowing any tightness along the front of the spine to become open and free and long. And now open your arms out into a cactus position. So the elbows come towards the floor at around shoulder height. And the forearms are parallel. And your forearms may or may not come to the floor here. It depends on how open you are. It depends on the height of your bolster. But just explore this nice open position in the chest, elbows wide. armpits releasing and relaxing you can slide your shoulder blades down your back a little bit here and if you need to change your arm position that's also fine Smooth inhalations, smooth exhalations.
And feel the entire length of your trunk from the pelvic floor all the way to the thoracic outlet where the neck meets the trunk. Feel that length. Feel the dimension of your trunk, its depth, its length, its width. Relax internally here. And then roll over onto your side to come out of the pose. Now we'll practice Shavasana. And we'll do what I call a wide Shavasana with the limbs nice and wide. So set yourself up by taking the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. And have your head resting on a blanket here so there's some softness under the head. And then stretch your arms out wide and stretch your legs out wide like a starfish. And just enjoy the spaciousness of this Shavasana, letting the limbs be expansive and relaxed at the same time. And deepen your breath here. And let your next exhalation be very slow and gradual and smooth. Relax and release. 